Welcome to the fifth Sunday of Lent here at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Kitchener. We begin by singing in the indigenous language of Cree, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Te pene kichi ke an kiki maka nichi ke. Christos kiki maka nichi ke. Te pene kichi ke an kiki maka nichi ke. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. The person who loves their life loses it, and the person who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember a friend of mine telling me how She spent five days and five nights in the hospital with her sick child. The only break she got was when her husband came and enabled her to take a shower. She described coming out of the shower one day to find her husband standing there and crying. She went on to describe walking into the kitchen another time at home when another child of theirs was ill, only to find her husband bursting into tears. She told me that he can't stand seeing our children suffer. The story teaches us more than daddy's cry. It becomes an image for me of what the words of Jeremiah meant in the first reading when he quotes the Lord saying, I will put my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The young father cried not because of the law or rule of what fathers are supposed to do when their child or children are ill. He he cried because of the law 
of love for his child that was written upon his heart and fleshed within his soul. So deep was this link and bond between this father's heart and the heart of his child that her tears called forth his tears. Her suffering called forth a deep suffering within his heart. In front of the pain of his child, this father felt little and poor and vulnerable. His tears flowed from the covenant that he shared with his child. For the covenant means the linking and the binding of hearts. Jeremiah reminds us of the covenant of Sinai was broken. When Moses came down the mountain, Mount Sinai, with the stone tablets and saw the people worshiping golden idols, he threw the tablets down. The tablets smashed into a thousand pieces, but despite the infidelity of the Israelite people to their covenant with God, they would become a forgiven people. The promise of God was that he would make a new covenant that they would never destroy. According to the rabbis, there are three kinds of prayer, each loftier than the preceding one. They are prayers, crying, and tears. Prayer is made in silence. Crying is with a raised voice. But tears overcome all things. In our second reading today, St. Paul tells us, In the days of the flesh, Jesus offered prayer, prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. In the days of the flesh, Jesus offered prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. In front of the woundedness of those he loved, in front of their sin, their selfishness, their greed, their hardened hearts, in front of their torn, ripped, and broken relationships with God and with one another, Jesus cried. Like the young father in the relationship to his child who was ill, there was a link and a bond, a covenant between the heart of Jesus and the heart of humanity. Jesus bore the scars of love, revealing the merciful and saving love of God for all people. Jesus would speak to them about death. He would have to die so as to enter into glory with God, the glory of God. The seeds need to die in order to bear fruit. Oh, how our hearts yearn to be fruitful and make a difference in the world in which we live. Our hope in the face of death, whether death means the letting go of sin, or the passing on to new life is Jesus. Jesus is the new covenant. Jesus is the law of love written upon our hearts. Jesus is the flesh of God gifted to us. Jesus is the bread of God, broken, shared, given, received, and eaten, so we may be we may be sustained on the journey. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, we are reminded of the link and bond that exists between our hearts and the heart of God. When we look into our hearts, do we see the law of God's love written upon our hearts and fleshed in our souls? Do we desire to walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus and run with Jesus and dance with Jesus and laugh with Jesus and cry with Jesus? So we come to Eucharist once again to receive bread for the journey. Eucharist is a place of the covenant. It is a place where we are nourished, forgiven, and fed. Through Eucharist, we desire to find the sacred place within our heart that we seek to live out of. Eucharist is another opportunity to be eye to eye, face to face, 
and heart to heart with God. Praise be Jesus risen. Amen.